Hello all, this is a tutorial video for an app called Drywall Calc made by Snappy Apps Inc. Uh, we're just going to run through a quick um, scenario where we're going to create a job and we're going to create three projects within that job uh, using three different methods just to give an idea of uh, how to use the app quickly. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the job module. Of course when you come into your app you come into the main menu. So we'll go to jobs and once we're in here we have a default job um, I'll create a new one just for the sake of showing you how to create a new one just hit the plus button and I'm going to type in the address of my job that'll be the name of my job but of course you can type in a job number or whatever you wish here and I'll hit OK and as you'll see a new job will be created and an ad will come up don't worry that's the only time a full screen ad comes up is when you create a new job it helps us pay for the app or pay for development of the app. <clears throat> As you can see in the job list, the arrow will select the job and you have a trash can here to delete jobs and a plus button to create jobs. And that's about the just of that. So we're gonna go to our 42 Pine Street job and hit the back button on our phone to back out. And we're gonna head right into the drywall module. As you can see when we head in here, you can see our selected job, 42 Pine Street, is in our title bar so we know what job we're working on at all times. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create three projects, but uh, for now we'll just have our first project. So we clicked on the, um, let me just back out here. We clicked on the title bar to bring up our projects, and these are projects within that job. So at 42 Pine Street, we are going to uh, do a project in the halls, doing the hallways. We're also going to do a project great room and a project bathroom. But we're not going to create those quite yet, and I'll explain why not after. Uh, the quick just of it is we're going to set up our our um, our default numbers, so our sheet sizes, costs, and such in this project. And then when we create the other projects, it's going to copy that data over so we don't need to open it over and over. So we have all selected. So we'll back out with our back button. And now we're in 42 Pine Street and working on the halls. So the first um, section we need to input data into is the coverage area. There's two options here. You can go by area or by room. In a minute, we're going to do a project by room, uh, the bathroom. But for now, we're going to do by area. So the first one we're doing is halls. So let's say we have um, a 40 feet of hallway. So we're going to click on our length. And what's going to come up is our calculator. And this allows us to enter our data it also allows us to do calculations. So I know we have 40 feet of hallway. And of course, um, there's going to be um, two sides of the hall. So we're going to multiply that by two to get 80 feet. And then we're going to back out. And that 80 feet will be entered into our length of hallway. So our hallway is 40 feet long, but we have two sides. So we have 80 feet. Uh, height of the ceiling. We'll enter eight foot six, just to show you how to um, input inches. So we have eight feet, and then we click the six button and inch, and that'll give us eight foot six in our main display here. And if we back out, it'll put eight foot six in here and automatically calculate the calculate the area that we're uh, drywalling. Um, your only other option in a coverage area is to do double layer drywall. Sometimes you want to do this for fire rating purposes. Um, in this example, we're not going to use it but it's just a matter of clicking on the checkbox. Then we get down to our next section, which is openings. Uh, all this is is area that is not going to be covered by drywall. Um, some people might choose to just leave this at zero, even if there is openings, um, just to avoid you know, not having enough drywall in the calculation. But um, for this, we are going to put in some openings. We're going to put in some doorways. So we're going to say that our hallway has three doorways. Um, so we'll click on this. Our doorways are, we're going to say just for... For, um, to make it easy, we're going to go 3 foot by 6 foot, so it's eight, 18 feet. So you can see that here if we go 3 feet times 6 feet, of course we're going to get 18 square feet. And we have 3 doorways, so we're going to times up by 3, and that'll give us our, our openings, 54 square feet of openings. So we'll back out, and those openings will come into our area. <clears throat> Now we're going to go down to our sheet settings. These are, these are the values we're going to want to keep um, common throughout our projects. So once we set this up once, that's why we're just working on the one project. When we create a new project, these values will carry over. 
So let's say we're using a four by eight uh, sheet of drywall. So four feet, height of eight feet. Sheet thickness actually has nothing to do with calculation. It's just for your reference, but I usually put it in. So to enter a half inch, we go one numerator inch, two denominator inch, and that gives us our half inch. We'll back out again. Uh, sheet cost, this is going to help you um, estimate the cost of your materials. So let's say $12.50 per sheet. Labor per sheet in hours. Um, you don't need to put this stuff in if you're not doing an actual estimate. If you're just a homeowner looking to uh, figure out the number of sheets you want, or you need to order, or you need to pick up. But for this example, we'll put uh, 15 minutes, so a quarter of an hour, in for labor per sheet and waste percentage. Well, since we actually put openings in, we'll put a 5% waste waste uh, percentage. Now you get into your other materials, your mud, your tape, your screws, and your adhesive. You can select between these just by clicking on the toggle buttons here. And uh, most of these are in a format of per 10 sheets. So this avoids us having to put in all the different containers you could buy, you know, a bag, a pail, a box. This way you're just, um, you're deciding the container and the app is asking you how much that container can, uh, uh, can do per 10 sheets. So let's say we're getting a box of mud and let's say that box of mud will do, we figure, 20 sheets. In that scenario, we would put in 0.5. So half a box will do 10 sheets. Mud cost is per box or bag or pail or however you're doing it. In this case, we're doing that box. So uh, we're going to say 30 bucks per box. And the labor to put on that box of mud. So let's say four hours. I'll just go through the other ones quick here. Tape, same thing per 10 sheets. Let's say we're using small rolls of tape, one roll per 10 sheet, uh, 250 per roll. Just gonna go through this quick. Uh, labor, say it takes us an hour to put on a roll. Screws, screws are a little bit different. Um, still screws per 10 sheets. So let's say we're using 300 screws on 10 sheets. Keep things simple again. Cost is a little different here. It's cost per hundred screws always. So let's go uh, five bucks for hundred screws. Labor to put in a uh, hundred screws. Uh, let's say, I don't know, an hour. And he said, let's say we're not using any. So this is all set up. So this is finished. So we'll hit the equals button. This will give us our calculation. Now it's just the hulls right now, but it's uh, going to give us a quick rundown of all our numbers, all our costs for our drywall, amount of drywall we need, mud, tape, screws, adhesive, all our subtotals, and all our totals. Um, subtotals and totals are going to be the same right now because we only have a single project, and that is hulls. So let's we'll dismiss out of this for now. And we'll click on the title bar again to get our projects up. And now when we hit this plus button, it's going to add a project, and it's going to be an exact duplicate of our first project. And that's great because it's gonna keep all our all our numbers that we use for uh, drywall size and our all our costs and labor labor charges. So that's fantastic. So we're gonna go to the bathroom and we're gonna make another copy and this one we're gonna call the great room. So first we'll go into the bathroom. Not literally and instead of by area, now we're going to go by room. What by room allows us to do is it allows us to um, to get a ceiling. So we'll be putting in our, our room width, depth, and height, and we'll be able to include the ceiling in the in the drywall. This this is going to be the handier of the two, most likely for homeowners and do-it-yourselfers. Whereas uh, people taking off large drawings and large areas are probably going to use the by area more often. Or of course, like we're doing here, you can do a mixture of the two. So we're gonna go into our bathroom. Uh, we're just gonna do this quick. Let's say we have seven foot ceilings. Uh, let's say the room width is six feet. And let's say it's long. Let's give it a 10 foot depth. 10 foot depth. And now we're going to include the ceiling. 
it's given us a perimeter here. You can actually just type in a perimeter as well. But it's calculated that. Uh, openings, we're just going to leave that same just for, we already showed how to do that. And you'll see all our sheet settings are already in here from our other, uh, from our first uh, project we did, the hulls, and plus other other materials as well. So we're done already. Makes it much quicker. Okay, so now we're going to go into our third project. So we'll click on the uh, menu bar again and go over to the great room. Now in this one, I'm going to show you another uh, technique to use. We're going to go by area, but this time we're just going to enter an area. And we're going to do that by going out of this module and using the areas module in the geometry section. So we're going to go into areas. And what I'm uh, just going to quick show you how to do is um, you might use this in a, uh, a trapezoid, which you might use in a vaulted ceiling. So we're going to do a quick, uh, this is a great room, so it has a, a large vaulted ceiling. So we just enter our figures that are shown in the diagram here. Um, in our case, we're going to say the height is 8 feet, just keeping all the numbers simple. But of course, it can be anything. And of course, you can work in metric as well. Uh, we're going to say our base length is, which is our room width, is 25 feet. And we'll say our top length that tapers in to 15 feet. Uh, quantity, we're going to have two of these because obviously the room is going to have uh, two ends to a cathedral ceiling. And we're going to want to calculate this in square feet. So we've got all our data in, now we can hit equals. And it'll give us our total area 320 feet. And this is a running total. So we could also now enter our walls if we wanted. So let's just enter the walls that are going to be underneath the uh, trapezoid, which is obviously just going to be a um, rectangle. And that rectangle, we're still going to have a width in here 25 feet, which is great. And let's say our wall height in this scenario is 10 feet. That'll give us our two rectangles that are below the uh, trapezoids. We're going to do a quantity of two again. We're going to do square feet again. And this time when we hit equals, you'll see it's giving us a running total. So we got 320 uh, square feet on our cathedral sections, and now we have another 500 square feet on our square sections below them. And now we have a total of 820 square feet. So we've calculated that. So let's dismiss this and exit out of areas. Now we're going back into our drywall. We will go by area. Um, let's make sure we're in our proper module, the great room we are. And now we're just going to click on area. And then in the calculator, we're going to click on the uh, history. And you're going to see that those calculations from the area module came into the calculator history. So now we can just click on our 820 feet squared, back out, and that area will end up in our area. Um, it is also squared off the room and calculated length and height, but just ignore that if you're putting it in, in an area. This is just for calculation purposes. So now that's in there. Uh, we can enter openings in the scenario. Let's just put zero. Uh, it's going to give us a little warning that we've put in zero, but that's okay. We meant to do that. And now we have all three of our rooms. We're going to hit equals. And you'll see now that we have the halls separate with subtotals. We have the bathroom separate with subtotals and we have the great room at the bottom with separate values and subtotals and of course we have our total cost and total labor as well this might be as much as you need and you can email these results to yourself however if you need to take this further you can go back out and you can now go into the estimate sheet now be aware that those will not those uh, projects will not be in the estimate sheet unless you have hit the equals button if you don't do your calculation, perform your calculation, it won't carry over to estimate. We did hit the equals button, so when we go in here, we'll see our halls, bathroom, and our great room with our subtotal values. And you'll notice in the estimate module, you have three tabs, your estimates, which is just showing the three that we've calculated to make sure that they're in there, and uh, the subtotals of them all. And now we can click on summary. Now as you go in here, you'll see green values, which are calculated and you cannot change. This is result text, calculated text, and you'll see black values, where figures you can either change or add in values. So your first section is materials. This was calculated from all of our uh, estimates, and now we can also add in quoted materials. We can add in a markup value, 
And once we do that, it will calculate a profit for us and a total. Uh, that's for materials. Now we can move down to labor. Under labor, we uh, have our total labor from our estimates, but we can also put in travel time. We can put in a labor rate. Um, we can put in a markup value and it will calculate our labor cost, our profits and our totals. Uh, you can play with this all you want. I'm not gonna put in values right now. Um, you'll be able to figure this out as you go quite easily. Um, expenses is the next section. You can put in expenses for permit, rentals, fuel, and then of course we have the all encompassing other to, uh, to cover stuff that we, uh, we left out here we forgot. And then of course the last tab is results. Once you go in here, everything is calculated except for your tax rate. So this will give you all your subtotals before profit. And then under totals, you'll get your subtotal. You'll be able to put in a tax rate and then you'll get uh, your tax value and your total estimate as well. So that's about uh, it in a nutshell. There are some other modules in here you might want to check out such as conversions allows you um, a handy spot to do uh, conversions from metric to imperial or volume, to whatever you want. There's a ton of uh, conversions in there. And of course, you can go straight into the calculator to do calculations as well. Uh, also in this calculator is a very handy scaling feature for scaling off uh, drawings. You might want to take a look at our tutorial for that as it's uh, quite convenient. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the app.